right, we've got the 63 kilo superstar, Taylor LaChapelle. Congratulations on your national championship today. How does it feel? Uh, it feels great. I came here to have fun and set the hours and that's what I did. And just tell us like, how did the day unfold for you? Take us through, take us through the day. How did, how did it start off with squats? Uh, squats started off strong. Everything felt really good. Felt like I'd missed my third on depth. Uh, it would have been a PR. Um, uh, squat or bench, my opener was a little harder than I wanted to be, but um, figured it out on my second and third, and I hit uh, PR on my, both my second and third times, and then deadlifts were strong too. Everything felt great today. Did you PR on deadlift as well? Yep, second and third attempts were PRs. Wow, so how are you PRing everything? Because I thought your training was a little bit derailed by the fact that you were in med school. I never, I never stopped training. That's what a few people have said to me. They, like she took time off and comes back even stronger. But I never, I never stopped training. I actually put on equipment back in December during my winter break, and then, um, but I was training raw this whole time. I, but I didn't get back into equipment until five weeks out from nationals when I decided to sign up. And what made you decide to show up and and do nationals? Uh, you messaging me on Instagram. <laughs> I had pretty much made up my mind that I wasn't going to. I didn't really have much time to train in equipment. Um, but then you sent me a message uh, like a couple days before the deadline, and I was like, no, I, I can't do it. And then uh, I was actually at the gym when you sent me that. So the next hour that I was training, I'm like looking at my calendar. I like, texted my coach, and I'm like, I could do this in five weeks. I could get ready. And did you expect at that time, whenever you know you kind of had that idea, okay, I could do it? Did you think you're going to be able to come in here and hit PRs? Um, well, that was the goal. I wanted to. I wasn't sure if I'd be able to PR um, everything or not. But um, yeah, but the more I was getting back into equipment and things were clicking, and yeah. Cool. Okay, Taylor. So you went to 2022 20, World Games. Are you looking to go back in 2025 to China? Um, we'll see. That all depends on my school schedule and what I can fit in um, with training and traveling. Okay, so uh, did you... You talked a little bit about your training leading up to this. Are you going to train? Are you training for anything else specifically? Like world, um, like that? Um, I I'd like to do worlds this fall. Um, I'm waiting to see what my school schedule looks like and um, talk to some people and see if it's possible to miss me. And Taylor, who's your coach? You want to give a shout out to who does your programming and everything like that? Uh, yeah, Brian Shekels. He's been my coach since I was uh, 11 years old. Um, so yeah, he helps me out every time I'm home uh, to train and he's put up with me for over half my life now. So yeah, he's great. And you know, you've, you've had a really amazing career and you're still super young in sport. You've been, you know, to Worlds a bunch of times, World Games. What in your mind is like the ultimate goal, the thing that you want to accomplish, you know, before you're done doing powerlifting? I want to be um, well, open world champion. Uh, and if I make it back to world games again in the future, champion. But open world champion is probably high up, pretty high up on my list of goals right now. All right. Anyone else have any questions for Taylor? Taylor, who do you feel pushes you in the sport? Who would you say your rival is? Um, Carla Gara from Italy. Yeah. She, I look up to her. She's insanely strong. So. What would you say your long-term goals are as far as numbers in the sport? Um, a 600-pound squat would be Awesome. I don't know. I never really, um, I guess, set like number goals. Um, just hit PRs. Just keep pushing. Keep and work. How did you feel about the officiating? Was it fair, unfair? <laughs> uh, 
what it should have been? What do you think in general? These are awesome. <laughs> um, I was fine with it today. Um, yeah, my I got a couple red lights on squat for depth, and yeah, I think that was fair. Um, my bench red lights, I wasn't I wasn't too sure about. What do you feel like you need to improve at in the sport? Squatting an inch deeper. <laughs> <laughs> All right, is that it, James? He's grilling. He's good. All right. Anyone else have any questions for the superstar, 63 kilo national champion, Taylor LaChapelle? All right, we'll stop torturing you. Let, let her get out of here. Congratulations once again, champ, and looking forward to seeing you dominate our worlds. Thank you. All right, we got Sam McCollum, national champion, 120 plus. How's it feel to win the title then? Leaving, especially since I had Carpino five. That was the big goal. I knew going in that I was going to run out of post. So if I got a total, I would have been national champion. But the big thing that was in our um, objective for this meet was to hit the Carpino five total of 1032.5, and we hit 1037.5. So we have it. All right, so Zen, congratulations, by the way, if I didn't say that right. Um, walk us through the day. You know, how did how did, how did go on squat bench? Um, squats were pretty good. Um, I hit a little bit less than I did in training, which uh, we can always look at and see what we can do differently for the next meet. Uh, I hit a 415, which I'm ecstatic about. I've been wanting a 900 pound squat in competition for a long time, several years at this point. And to finally get it on the platform is very exhilarating. Good feeling. Yeah. All right, and how was bench? <laughs> how was bench, man? You know how it goes on a quick bench. Uh, I missed my opener. This was after a pretty catastrophic uh, failure in the warm-up room. Yeah, tell, tell us about that. I, drew, I was hitting my last warm-up at 270 kilos, so 595 for the Americans. That was it. Um, and I dumped it. Downwards, on right to my stomach, and it went to my face. It went everywhere. Yeah. It was bad. Like that. Uh, shout out to the crew from Elite Iron that was in the back helping out, and they saved my life. And we took it, and I kind of messed up my opener. I think a little bit was just a residual um, psychological uh, concern about what happened <laughs> just like five minutes ago, but. We managed, I hit it on my second. It was a little bit dicey, but uh, we were able to make the adjustments. Uh, it really did a good three and close bench and so we closed on strong. All right, and then how did Delos? Take it to the Delos. Um, Delos were pretty average. Being a super heavyweight equipped lifter, you know, being a super heavyweight in general, Delos there, it's not pretty butter. Um, it is something I've been working on. Yes. I managed to hit a BPR on deadlift, a 5 kilo BPR, 322.5. So I hit 711. It's good to finally be over 700 rather than being at 699.97. Wow. You grab a, you know, if you grab a chunk at the ground. So you hit a few major milestones uh, at this meet then? Yes. Definitely. PR by total by, I think, 52 kilos. Wow. That's phenomenal. And you went eight for nine? Yes, eight for nine. Yeah. First time ever? Or? Mm, I hit eight for nine the first equipment I did, which was actually in Arizona as well. It was run by the Elms. It was uh, Southwest Regionals 2019 in the USAPL. Uh, they ran it in, Arizona, in Phoenix somewhere um, on that side of the city. So it was good to come back and hit the same result. Yeah, Arizona's a lot more weight on the line. Arizona's good luck for you then. It is. Because you have not been going eight for nine recently. No, nope. especially out of worlds. We have to work on that. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is a good start, man. Yeah, absolutely. And congratulations again. Uh, who else has questions for Zen? I think James has several. Oh, yeah, he does. Okay. Sam, what would you say your long-term goals are in the sport? Um, to become an IPF Open World Champion and to go to the World Games. Hopefully, I will qualify in 2024 to go to the World Games in China, which would be a lot of, it would be a very significant event for me because a lot of my family is in China and hopefully they'll be there and stand and watch it. Which would be amazing. Are you Chinese? I'm half Chinese. What? I don't know that. Yeah, my mom's Chinese. And you live in Denver? I live in Boulder. Oh, actually, oh, I live in Lama. Um, I just oh, moved yeah. up to Lama. My dad lives in Boulder, my mom lives in Boulder. So uh, I, grew, I was born and raised like 
just northwest of that. But I live like 30 miles away from that. Okay. How far is that for LA? Yeah, it's about a 45 minute drive. That's not too it's bad. not too bad, no. It's definitely worth it to train with Natalie and Bryce. And oh, sure. Bryce grabbed my knees today, and Natalie was in the back, and they were supportive. They were very, very helpful. Mm -hmm. Bryce, what's your, your timeline here for uh, winning the Worlds? Um, I'll leave the gods on the side. That's true. Zan, where would you rank yourself as far as where you are in your career at this point? Versus where Jack, Joe Capolino was at this in his career at this point. He was uh, at the same age. Uh, he was a better bencher, and we're gonna work on that. A little bit of that execution issue. But I'm 23. When Joe was 23, he was a little bit ahead of where I'm currently at. Um, not on squat though. But on bench and deadlift and total, he was still a little bit better. But I'm definitely following in his footsteps, and I truly think that. As lifting generations unfold, that I'd be this current generation's you know, cap. Who would you say your role model is in the sport? Joe Cap. And Mike Z over there. Shout out Mike. Oh, he's another mentor of mine. And I have uh, these two, and especially, um, you know, I'd have to give a big shout out to my dad. He's um, not really a competitive powerlifter by any means, but he, he puts up a lot of my crap. And he keeps me grounded. He will not mince words with me, and he'll actually, you know, chew me out a bit if I'm mentally not there before me. He definitely keeps me grounded above all else. So I mean, I would say my biggest role model in the sport, the person who's kept me on the right mental path to this sport, is definitely my dad. What are your direct numbers goals for Worlds this year? Um, I'd like to hit uh, four thirty or so on the squad. I'd like to bench over seven deadlift in the mid sevens. I really want to, I hope that I'm in a group this year, but as the nominations trickle in, that's one we'll, we'll see what group I'm in, but I ultimately want to podium top three at once in Lithuania this year. That's awesome. What's that? Good. All right. Anyone else have any questions for Zen? Anyone else back here have any questions for Zen? All right, Zen, once again, man, congratulations on your national championship. Make, hitting the Carpino 5 and making the world team. Yeah. We're looking forward to seeing what you do in Lithuania. Thank you very much, Paul. Of course. Absolutely. Alex Mayer, 74 kilo, open, equipped, national champion. Congratulations on your huge performance today, Alex. And uh, first things first, just how's it feel to be the national champs? Just another day. Just another day in the life of Alex, huh? That's right. So take us through a day. How did, how did it unfold for you? Awesome. Uh, man, woke up at five, drank some coffee, tried to lose some weight, and then spent the rest of the time in the sauna, sweating it all out. And somehow I did it. I don't know, I was starting to see stars. I drove back over here, weighed in. Thank goodness. I made it. Surprisingly, at a PR total, whatever it is. Um, all right. <laughs> so, um, take us through, you know, what happened on the uh, squats? Uh, uh, went back to my room, started eating some rice, started rehydrating, drove back over here because I drove here. I didn't want to walk because I was just that depleted, couldn't make it. So, I drove back and forth. Wait, yeah. so you drove from one end of the hotel to the other? Yeah. Okay, nice. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> That's smart. I was not going to do that walk at 162. And yeah, once uh, I felt like I was good enough, I started warming up. Everything hurt, but after walk, getting some water in me and moving around a little bit, they didn't do half bad. Yeah, so I think you went three for three on squats, is that right? Uh, two for three. I missed my second on death. Okay, that's right. Went up, got it on third. Big. That's right. So, I mean, what do you think about that? Like, when you miss your second, and then you you you, you and Jeff decided you're going to go ahead and go up anyway. Do you think it was going to help you get to death? Yeah, a little bit, because yeah. all through training, I wrap myself. I pretty much train by myself occasionally. I have some people, some homies spot me. It's really helpful for the mentals to 
you know, <laughs> actually try or squats and not play it safe. And actually get some of these games and perform on the platform. Uh, but yeah, when Jeff, Jeff has always been rapping me for the past like three or four comps now, and it felt good. And yeah, I needed that extra weight to kind of hit the. All right, then, how, then take us how to bench go. All right, just lay down, rehydrate, get ready for deadlifts. <laughs> That's all bench is for you? Sorry. Well, no, bench, bench went pretty good. I had my homie, Aaron Palmerice, shout outs. Uh, he was telling me not to be trying to touch my belly. So I was trying to be super heavy. I'm not a big guy, I'm tiny. And just keep it closer to my chest and Man, it didn't feel good. It felt like a slingshot. It just popped right up. That third, no easy. Yeah. Yeah, it, was, it moved, moved really well. All right, and then you're known as a huge deadlifter, big deadlift specialist. How how did uh, how did deadlifts go? Almost went good. Everything was fine. Uh, second attempt was a little slow, but it felt good. Uh, started to twerk a little bit, I felt like. And then on third, I just needed to take an extra moment to secure that grip. And yeah, it just fell out. What were you attempting though? Attempted on third, yeah. uh, 365, 804. I wanted 370, take it five times body weight. But the coaches said, no. But if it was 370, I would have taken that extra moment to be like, yeah, my grip is good and I would have got it. <laughs> I, think. I love that. I love that. <laughs> so, um, are you going to see 370 worlds? If I can control this body weight, then yes. How much weight did you really cut him to make 74 kilos? I cut 10 pounds this morning. <laughs> 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 Maybe I did that in December too. Maybe that's the key. I just gotta stay high, got real quick, come back up. No, that feels bad. I, was, I still feel like. What what rating is this? It's, it's, no, no, it's rated R. I felt like shit. Yeah. <laughs> I still feel like shit. My insides are dehydrated. Yeah. What's your diet look, look like roughly on a daily basis? Go to HB, the grocery store in Texas, the best grocery store in the nation. And I pick up some pre-made meals. I travel for work, so I'm staying in hotels all the time. Some of the times they don't have the kitchen. And so yeah, these pre-made meals kind of just help me out. But it's the spring, everybody's falling in love, everyone's getting married, so that's a little bit of a brawl in my way. Getting a little too good. Sorry, coach. <laughs> Do you have any hobbies or sports you compete in other than powerlifting? Mm, I like to hike. I drive everywhere. The rodeos. I don't have to get on. Uh, <laughs> uh, Wait, you do rodeos? I haven't done one yet. I've been practicing. I'm trying to. I'm not going to say it out loud. Let's go to see. No, no <laughs> let's get into it. We're, you do rodeos. What do you do in rodeos? I like to jump off the bull. You're a bull rider. Yeah, I actually banged. Like, I banged up my shoulder. Uh, I took this bull squatting in the chute, which is not ideal for leaving the chute. And so he got up, started bucking, and the way I landed, I landed flat like this, and it messed up my shoulder pretty bad. I still feel it, especially on squats where I had to change my my wrist on my hands and just the way I grab it and all that. Turns out to be better because I couldn't do that with my thumbs not holding on the bar. <laughs> but nah, I just gotta warm up a little bit because you know, of age. Wow. What are your goals for Worlds this year? Get on that podium. Papa Douglas was saying that I could have made the podium this last year with that kind of total. So it would be nice to get up there. It will take some effort to, uh, let's see, Oleg is still there, Kajel, and Alan and Polly, Ochoa, Squirt, third or something. There's that Canadian though too, you got a big spot. Did, or, 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 or. 
big squat on bench. So if I could get the bench and the squat up, I can see it. Well, yeah. All of this is just stepping stones to World Games. Do you feel like you have the potential to win an Open IPF World Championship? It's there. We just got to get the right formula. Just the equipment, the weight cut. The, I feel like I got my recomposition pretty good. As you can see today, turned out all right. How is the equipment fit with all the recomping and everything that you're doing and with the big weight cut? It was a little loose. Um, Got it. it takes a little bit more effort when I am training by myself, but today I was able to uh, get it on with some ease. Oh, hold on. So I can get some better fitting for meat day. Same here. Can't have a winning clothes. Okay, uh, we're sorry for the technical difficulties. Router was unplugged, but um, we're back. We're with Alex Mayer, 74 kilo national champion, open national champion. And uh, we got James Townsend. He's got a couple more questions and we'll wrap this up, Alex. Alex, what do you feel your ceiling is in the sport as far as five to 10 years from now? I haven't thought that far ahead. I don't even know what I'm going to do in 10 years. Uh, It'd be nice to get some gold, though. Some more records that will be untouched for a while. It pissed me off this last time some dude from uh, Southeast Asia attempted my world record. So I need to bump that up and get untouched. What are your direct goals for Open Worlds this year? I want low ball it, say just get on the podium. If I can do a little bit better than what I did today, that would be ideal. What do you think your biggest area of improvement that you need to make in is? By the way, it's the All right, good. All right, Alex. Congratulations once again. We'll get you out of the hot seat there and uh, let you go enjoy the rest of your night. Get some food in you. Yeah, um, pleasure. Thank you so much for doing this and congrats again. Yeah.